guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Today we are going to do the solo for Tornado of Solos. So, well, it's pretty much a tornado of solos, yes, but it is <laughs> um, an absolutely insane solo. So, um, I apologize, it's going to be a lot of notes. Marty Friedman um, is just an absolute monster, monster guitar player, and his, some of his solos, especially this one, are uh, obs obscenely difficult to play. So um, there's going to be, uh, most of the sol solo, we're going to be able to do it exactly note for note. The very end there, he never does the same thing twice. He kind of runs up and down a scale real quick, um, and I'll kind of show you around what he's doing. Uh, but there's a little section in there, it only lasts about probably two or three, maybe two seconds within the solo. Um, that is just pure craziness, he's just going for it. Um, but there's not a lot of definitive things going on, and whenever you see him play it live, it's always different. Um, but then he com comes back with a kind of a descending lick that's a, a repetitive pattern that we can lock back in with. All right, so let's start here. We're gonna go phrase by phrase. Um, and once again, I apologize for all the notes. <laughs> so this first phrase sounds like this. Let me actually turn off some of the effects so we can make this sound reasonable. So here we go. All right, so it's a, kind of a trademark of Marty Freeman. Well, he'll do a quick little really big bend and then release it and then come back up with a slow kind of half step bend. So he starts the solo with this at the third fret on the G string. So that's a big bend. And then brought back this, so it's a really quick bend and release and then slowly bringing it up a half step. All right, then it's gonna have an ascending melody. But what he's doing here, he plays the melody on the G string, the fourth fret, and then back at the seventh fret, he'll lightly mute the seventh fret on the D. And then over to the sixth on the, um, on the G, and then back to that seventh fret on the D. He just does that for the first couple. And then when he gets to the seventh fret, he just continues up the G string, slide to, to the ninth fret, and then uh, up to 11, and pull off to nine. So we've got this. And then you're gonna do a quick little slide down from nine to seven. And here again, we have a quick bend, a quick bend and release. It's really, he's just doing a quick little shake of his wrist, really. And then he slowly bends up into the note. All right, so all together. All right, next phrase. All right, so we're kind of moved along. Uh, So that's seven nine on the G string, and then ten seven on the B. Then back down nine seven on the G. Then shift back to the sixth fret. Then you're gonna do a hammer between from six to seven over to nine on the D. So all together. And then hammer six to seven on the G and then hang out on that six a little bit. He uses a very wide vibrato too on whenever he's kind of uh, just sustaining a note. And then we're gonna end this phrase. So that's... So I'm picking six on the G, then quick hammer to seven, back to six. Then nine seven on the D, over to nine on the A, then seven nine on the D, and then you're gonna come over and grab that nine again, but this time do it with your index finger. He reaches over and grabs it with his index. We have this, and it kind of start, it kind of sets up the next lick there. All right, so uh, the next phrase uh, is a really cool one, kind of cross the string. Sounds like this. All 
All right, so we just ended the previous lick on the ninth fret on the A string. You're going to pick that again and kind of slightly palm mute it. So 9, 10 on the A, and then 9, 11, 12 on the D. Over to 11 on the G string, and then 12 on the B. And you're going to hear those notes kind of ring together when he plays it. Then you're going to shift up to the 14th fret on the B, back to that 12, and then a couple times on the 14th fret again, back down to 12. And you're going to pick 14 and do that half step bend. So we have this. And then you can pick that release down to 12, and then kind of a pre-bend there at the 13th fret. Half step in, and then 12, twice, 14, over to the 12th fret on the G. So all together. All right, from there we have this. All right, so we're just, play that 12. Pick 14 and slide up to 15. Then back down to 14, down to 10 on the high E. And then back to 14. And then we have a quick little 10 to uh, 14 hammer on. So this, it kind of sounds better in context. And then we're gonna have 10 on the high E to 14 on the B string done twice. So putting that together, you can really see how it, how it works. One more time. Then 12 on the B, 11 on the G, and then slide down to 12. So let me kind of get it in my hands again. Slide down to 9, play 11, then slide 9 to 7, and then do a bend there at the 9th fret, and then slide 7 to 6, so way this. All right, now we get to the really fun part. The first part of that sounds like this. All right, so these arpeggios are gonna start up here at the uh, 19th fret there, and then down to the 15th fret on the B. So it's between 15 and 19. We pick the top note, 19, then have a quick little trill. Do a hammer on, 15, 19, pull back off to 15. Then we play 18, 16 on the G string to um, 16 on the D, then back 16, 18 on the G. Back to 15 on the, high, on the B string. And then, I'm sorry. So that's sliding into the 19th fret play 14, then 15, 14 on the B, over to 16 on the G, then 14, 15 on the B, up to 14 on the high E. So he slides into that one. All right, the next arpeggios look like this. All right, so that is gonna be up at the, um, Uh, the 19th fret on the high E string, and the 15th on the um, on the high E as well. You do that same. It's like the same pattern that this one was. So we have this. The different notes, but we're gonna still do the same. Like play the top note, do a trill between the, those two notes, and then descend. 17 on the B, 16 on the G, then uh, 17 on the D, 
16 on the G, coming back up. Then back to the 17, 15 on the high E, so we have this. When you get that, the 19th fret on top again, so you go back all the way back up. Step and a half in, release, and you're going to pull off 19 to 18, and then back to 19. Next arpeggio. All right, so that one's kind of starts the same way. 19 on top and 16 on the, so 16 and 19 on the high E string. So the little trill, 17 on the B, 16 on the G. Slide down to this 13th fret, and then you're gonna do a little E major arpeggio. So that's a quick sweep, just from the 14 on the D, 13 on the G, roll across the 12th fret on the B and the high E, pull off 16 to 12 on the high E, come back down to the 14, and then pick that 13 on the G again, and slide it down to the 9th fret. Alright, then we have this quick little uh, tremolo pick part. Now I believe on the recording he's actually playing a lot of octaves there. You can slightly hear the top note, but it's not very apparent. When he plays live, he always does it as octaves. So you could play it any either way. You just want to do the note on the G string. Or you want to add that top note, just play the octave shape there. But the you know, using the eleven the um, G string as a guide, we have the 11, 12, 15. 7, 9, and then 6. So we have this. It's kind of good, sounds good. Just got do a wide picking stroke. And you get a little bit of that top string in there. All right, next phrase. All right, so we're gonna stop right there, right before the crazy stuff starts. So we're gonna st we're start with a just a um, just a nice melody, seventh fret on the G, a lot of vibrato, nine on the D, nine on the A, and then hammer, uh, quick little hammer, seven nine on the D, then seven nine on the G, and then big bend there at the eighth fret on the G string, release down to the seventh fret. All right, from there we're gonna have this. That's sliding into the ninth fret on the D, over the seventh on the G, back to the ninth a couple times. Then back to the seven nine. And then you're gonna roll over and grab the ninth fret on the G string. Nine seven. And 9 7 on the D. So just kind of follow that melody. And then you come back to this. It's a quick little bend and release there at the 9th fret on the, on the D string to the 7th fret on the D. And then. then Kind of slide quickly from nine to seven on the a, uh, a string down to that fifth fret. So we have this. So it's the whole section. All right, now we have some sweet picking to take a look at. Let me slow it down for you so you can kind of see what's happening before I break it down. So we have this. All right, so that is some sweet picking and some kind of uh, really just string picking. If you really watch close how he plays it live, um, it's a little bit different. You'll see a lot of people play it. Um, so let's just take a look at it. We're gonna slide into the ninth fret. 
then the, play the eighth on the oh, ninth fret on the A, then eighth on the D string, and then you sweep across from nine on the D, nine on the G, eight on the B. Hammer on the eleventh fret, slide up to fourteen, pull off to eleven. So it is. Pull off to 11, then play 10, 12 on the G, pull off 14 to 12 on the D, and then play 14 on the A. So we're doing. And this time when we go back up, it's not actually sweet picking. It's playing 12 on the A string, 11 on the D, hammering on the, the 14th fret of the um, D string. And then ha uh, play, hammering 10 to 14 on the B string. And then when you get to the high E string, it's a quick slide up, up to the 14th fret there with your index finger. And then you're going to recover by going back down and pick, uh, pulling off 10, uh, 14 to 10 on the on the B string, over to 12 on the G, and then quick little 10 to 14. Uh, back to 10, trill there on the uh, B strings with this. All right, and then we get to this rapid picking part, which is just a repeated pattern, extremely fast. So the first thing is, let's get the pattern down. So let me play it a little bit slower than I did at the beginning, so you can kind of see it, um, see the pattern, and then uh, kind of probably get it down quicker. So it looks like this. Alright, so you, you probably noticed that Marty Friedman's got a very unique picking style. Now, probably there's a couple of ways to really get this fast, uh, like two or three ways, and I'll, I'll show them all. You can start, first we'll just start with the pattern itself. If you want to use mostly alternate picking, uh, which he doesn't do, he actually does a little mini sweep across the B and the high E, but if you want to... So we just play it. That's just playing. The pattern is this. You're going to pull off from 14 to 10 on the high E string, and then play 12 on the B string. Back to the 10th fret on the high E string. Let's play this. Now we have this, and then you're going to do two pull-offs from 14 to 10. Let's play this. Then back to the 12 on the on the uh, B string, back to the 10. So this. So you, it's, the thing is, is to kind of really hear where that top note is at. One more time. So you can see I did the pattern. And then what I did is I pulled off twice from 14 to 10, then finished the pattern, and then do that again. So all together. And then we're going to start moving around the high note. That's the fit, going to go up to the 15th fret here, on, and just it's the only note difference. You pull back off that off to the 10. And then do it with the 4 to 10 pull off. And then do that, those two again. So that's the actual pattern. So here is the whole pattern. So this is going to be the best place to practice it because it's the smallest stretch. 
because from here the stretches get really, really big. So the next thing, we're going to do the exact same pattern, but only thing, it, we always have these two notes. What's changing is the top notes. So now it's going to be from pulling off from 15 uh, to 10. And then the note you're going to transition between is 17 and 15. So that's a very, very big stretch. So we have this. So all together. All right, now we're going to reach up to the 16th fret, pull off between 16 and a 10. Remember, that's always the same note you're going down, down to on the B string. And then 17, 16, 17, 16 on top. Just a very big stretch, so all together. And then now you can jump up to the um, 18th fret and you're going to do a bar across the 14th fret on the B string. So you're going to pull off and basically do that pattern, basically the first half of it, uh, from pulling off 18 to 14 and just doing the roll from the 14 back to the high E. And then doing that pattern there at this, between from 17 to 12 with the 14 on the B string. And you're gonna grab it with that high E string bend at the 17th fret. So we have. Now, how do you wanna pick that? You can, uh, the way he does it is he. He does a downstroke across the B and the high E string. Now, you can always have the, the note, the top note be with an upstroke, so you can really accent the upstroke. So to really get it flowing, it might be easier just to do that little mini sweep and then just do all the top notes to, oh, that you pull off with just upstrokes. It might help the timing out and really bring out that top note. All right, so after that bend, that is where it gets, that bend at the 17th fret, that's where it gets crazy and it's really kind of not a very distinct part and he always does it different live. He kind of starts with. So what we can do here is just, kind of do a similar thing. He's sliding into the 18th fret on the B to 19 on the G, back to the 18, and then pull off 19, 18 on the B, and then the same thing on the uh, G. And then go back up with the 17, 19 on the high E, I mean, I'm sorry, the B string, and then play hammer 17 to 21 on the high E, pull off, and then kind of from ninth down to the 19 on the B, back to that high E string. So we have this. And then you're gonna go up here. So he does go all the way up to up to the the 24th fret. So just the notes he's playing through. Like I said, he's not really. He's just going for. He's just playing um, 19 and 22 on the B string, and then 19, 22, and the 24 on the high E. And now when he gets past that part, then there's a distinctive pattern. All right, so let's look at that little descending pattern he does here. So we're gonna start it with, by pulling off 22 to 19 on the B string. Hammer back onto 22 and then roll over and grab the 22nd from the high E string. Then you're gonna play 19, slide down to 17, hammer on, and then grab that roll and hit the, the 19th on the um, high E string. So we have this. Now that little lick, four note lick, we're gonna continue taking down the scale. So I just slid down from 17 to 15, hammer back onto that 17, and roll over to the uh, high E string and grab 
the note on the same fret. So it is. Then you're gonna do slide 15 to 14, hammer back to 15, and roll over and grab the 15 on the high E. Now, continuing with the same pattern, uh, slide down from 14 to 12, hammer back to 14, and grab the 14 on the high E. So we have this all together. Now from here, he doesn't roll over to the high E string anymore. Now what he does is just continue. He continues doing the same look. So he gets to the seventh fret without hitting the top, the high E string. And then he just kind of does a little legato lick between 10, 8, and 7 on the beat. Kind of just making it a blue scale lick by going over to the 10th fret on the G, back to the 7th fret on the B, and then descend 10, 9, 7 on the G. So he holds that 7 real quickly, and then he does a quick little blues lick. That's the bend on the 9th fret on the G. Roll from the 7th on the B to the high E. And and that 10th fret bend on the B string. And he ends the solo with this lick. Now the way you really kind of want to look at this is just kind of the same pattern done three times, even though it's a little bit more erratic than that. Um, you want to look at it like... Um, just hammering on, four, five, seven on the G. And then playing four on the B, pull off five to four, and then you can start sliding up to kind of move to the next position, and you can hear them go up to the sixth fret. But he uses that as like a connector to doing the same lick at the seventh fret. And then he jumps up and plays the same thing at the eleventh fret. So this. Just really, he wants a really disjointed sounding lick, and that's how he accomplishes it. And when you get up top here to this last one, it's the same lick at the 11th fret. You go all the way to 12, pull off to 11, and then just go back to the 14 on the G. And you just kind of just do the 14 on the G into this little quick little troll between 10, uh, I mean 11 and 12 on the B few times and then finish the solo, thank God, with the 12th fret there on the B. Alright, so like I said, there's going to be some parts of it that, uh, you know, most of it are very succinct. That's how Marty Freeman is. He's got, uh, they're very unique parts and they're like really well composed and very strange to play uh, for pretty much everybody but him. Um, but they sound killer. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe picked up some new licks. Um, and I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.